before we get to the Preakness, I should say, to look at the Black Eyed Susan, very similar to what we saw at Churchill Friday. We will see the running of the Black Eyed Susan. It will be for three-year-old fillies, and uh, I'm going to take a page out of Raider Jim's book and give you a little history of why it is the Black Eyed Susan. And uh, obviously, Black Eyed Susan is a uh, flower that is uh, in, in Maryland. Obviously, Pimlico is in Baltimore or the greater Baltimore area. Um, and as we saw, Lilies for the Phillies, the Run for the Roses, the Black Eyed Susan uh, winner will get the uh, Black Eyed Susan um, uh, gown, if you will. So I'll give you a little history there. I, uh, I know Raider Jim was probably going to if I didn't, but I want to do a little more heavy lifting here on this podcast. But we will see these three-year-old Phillies getting ready to run. But Raider Jim, what are your thoughts on the Black Eyed Susan running on Friday at Pimlico? Well, as you've already touched on, and we'll get more into that, there's the Preakness on the second race in the Triple Crown, eight entries. And I'll get into that. But as an example, on Friday, the big, big race, the one we're going to talk, right, talk about right now, the Black Eyed Susan Stakes, uh, there are 12 entries. So you have 50% more entries. The purse on this race is only $300,000. The purse for the Preakness is $1.65 million. Uh, and the caliber of horses, I'm not taking anything away from the eight entries on the Saturday race, but wow, there's some good horses in this race, uh, but it's going to make, I think, racing in general, they may have to step back and take a look and say, what's going on? We've only got one horse from the Derby running in the Preakness, and it just doesn't make sense. But anyway, we'll get to the Preakness in a second. This race, uh, I tell you, I like the favorite right now, and I can't help it every time I try to tell myself, you're not going to bet with your heart. I can't help it. The nine horse buys it. It's a Kentucky horse, three-year-old female. Who's on board? Flavian Pratt, the, the best jockey in North America in my book. And the trainer, Bob Baffert. Now, interestingly enough, also was something we talked about just a couple minutes ago. Running out of the five and six positions, Frosty O'Toole at 15 to one. Miracle, a New York horse, 10 to one. Uh, Frosty O'Toole is going to be ridden by Joel Rosario. Miracle is going to be ridden by Irad Ortiz. Both horses are trained by Todd Fletcher. So apparently the suspension doesn't apply in Baltimore. Uh, again, scratch my head. I don't understand it. None of those horses would be on my ticket regardless. I do like, again, Biza coming out of the nine spot. I also like Brad Cox's horse, Merlotza, running out of the four position. Laurent Giroux is going to be riding on that. And my my value horse that I think could come in, uh, probably get a place or a show definitely is going to make a race of it is that one horse sacred wish with john velasquez on board g weaver is the trainer at 10 to 1 right now showing good value on that biza is not a value horse at seven to five but still if he's the favorite he's the favorite you can you can box him up on some exactas and see if anybody has what it takes to uh, take him over you also have ball pool uh ridden by uh, franco and trained by glasses aren't on uh, our address. I'm not familiar with the name. I'm sorry about that. But running out of the eight spot. So you've got nine, one, four, and eight. Those would be my uh, horses that I'll be paying attention to and see what the numbers look like. Yeah, I have four, or I have uh, essentially four horses that I had kind of in my uh, exact uh, trifecta pool, and it's nine, one, four, eight. So we're on the same page there. Um, I have notes on all these horses. We don't rehearse this stuff either. I know, folks. right? Like we, we, we're obviously both of the same mind, but it's not too often that, you know, you throw four horses out and those are the four that I'm kind of picking through. Um, and I'll start with the one horse, Sacred Wish. Uh, you kind of touched on most of it. The biggest thing for me here is value. Um, been very consistent in its three starts. We're talking about a 77, an 80, and a 78. However, you are going to see a need to see a little bit more going forward um as you know the buyer par for the uh black eyed susan you know in the past it's been around 89 so you're gonna have to improve on that and obviously to beat fiza which you talked about that nine horse five for five in the winner's circle um the value won't be there more than likely um but the last two times this horse has ran including the santa anita oaks has yet to be challenged uh so we'll see if that happens in this uh in this black eyed susan the four horse the other one that jumps out to me um, three straight wins for Merlaza, um, but still, as I said, for most of these horses not named Faiza, they're going to need to improve on their best runs, which is kind of what you expect at this grade. But um, the 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 82s and 81s are good at the the you know ungraded stakes level or even grade threes. 
but to get this one, I think you're going to be need to be in the very high 80s or low 90s. Um, and then finally, the other horse is, of course, that eight horse that you also touched on as well. Ball pool is interesting. Their speed and consistency is there, um, but I, I, I don't know if they had the whole, you know, we talked about, um, you know, Rob Atris. I wasn't too familiar with him as well. And this is a horse that essentially was running in optional claiming races. Last time out, did get into the ungraded stakes race, but one of the few that hasn't run at a grade two or grade three level. So I do have questions there, but, you know, not to kind of add on to it um, for uh, what Raider Jim said, but those are the horses that I'm also keeping an eye on. Who's your Philly is interesting as well. Um, was really good as a two-year-old. However, as a three-year-old at the grade two level, hasn't gotten it done this year, um, has essentially lost, I mean, both times to pretty mischievous, as we saw in the Oaks, not the worst thing in the world there. Um, and then finally, the last horse I want to touch on is uh, Miracle. The six horses uh, Raider Jim kind of did here. Um, look, personally, I think it, not to, the pun is intended here, but it's probably going to need a Miracle to win this race. However, at 10 to 1, um, and has the closest buyer score to FISA uh, at 86, running back at fairgrounds in April, or excuse me, in February. Um, that 86 is the highest any other horse has been. So Miracle's another horse I'm also keeping an eye on, but this this race I think is pretty much wide open after FISA. It's just yeah. a question of what type of value, if any, will FISA have? And personally, I don't think a straight bet for FISA at my bank level is going to have any value. You're going to have to find exacto trifectas, exotics to play with. And that always kind of opens, opens the door up for some craziness to go down. But yeah, the only knock I can see, on, I'm sorry, pardon me. Oh, go for it. it. The only knock I can see on FISA is the travel. Uh, well, trained on just going out there, it seems like within the last few days or within the last week was actually training at Santa Anita last week, all the yeah. way through the 12th of May, which is, that that's a, pretty good distance to take the horse but if you're wondering how special is this horse actually broke its maiden here at del mar right before thanksgiving on the 12th of november and then after that has competed in a grade one two grade threes and a grade two and has won them all so this is a pretty sharp horse five for five since uh 2022 three for three in 2023 uh has already banked four hundred twenty thousand dollars in purse money this year so like we're saying, you're probably not going to uh, make a lot of money unless you have a lot of money. However, that's going to be the leader on your exact ticket. Yeah, that's a that's a. I think if you're playing the exotics, um, FISA has to has to be on your on your card somewhere, unless you know something we don't. Uh, but yeah, I, I think FISA is the only way you're going to be able to bet that horse is exotically. 